Good morning. And Happy New Year. Amen. Amen, somebody. God's been mighty good. We've crossed over and do another year. And uh, even in the midst uh, of inclement weather. Amen. Potential inclement weather. God is still good. Because he reminds us of the fact that he's still in charge. And he's still in control. And so we are thankful to him for blessing us uh, to go through 2021. And uh, he has allowed us to cross over into uh, 2022. Uh, and we know that uh, it's going to be full of uh, the rich blessings of God, whatever might come our way. God, God still got it. Amen, amen. So good to see you this morning. And we are thankful for your presence. Uh, we're only here because of God's love. Uh, because uh, he, he, he uh, made a way and kept us uh, through the course of last year. To those who are worshiping with us uh, virtually, we are happy to have you as well. And we'll recognize uh, all of our visitors at the close of this worship service on this morning. Uh, because God loves us, he wants us to love each other the same way that he loves us because uh, this is how the world knows that we truly belong to God by the way we love each other. Amen. Amen. So say this with me. We love because God first loved us. Go to all your neighbors around you and say, I love you. And ain't nothing you can do about it. Amen. Don't even think about trying. Don't even think about trying. Amen. Uh, because of God's love, we have this blessed privilege of being able to uh, go to Him in prayer uh, whenever we have need. And uh, all of us uh, has need before the throne of God all the time. Amen. And so we are thankful to Him. For his unmatched love that continues to uh, be shouted upon us, that allows us to uh, approach his throne in prayer and pour out our petitions uh, before him uh, and find help in time of need. And so today is no different. We lift up these very requests uh, before his throne, and as always, he asks that you. Take down these very prayer requests uh, in your prayer journal, in your uh, personal, uh, private, and devotional time, be in prayer on behalf of those uh, who have made their requests known, uh, as well as pray along with us uh, on this morning as we pray to God in prayer. Uh, we're going to try to get through this service as quickly as we can this morning. So we can get you out of here. Uh, so when it comes to the preaching portion, we make no promises. Uh, continue to be in prayer for Sister Lucia Gentry and for her health. Uh, pray that God will continue to bless her to grow strong. So let's remember Sister Gentry in our prayer. Also, <clears throat> excuse me, continue to be in prayer for Sister Velma Burchett. Uh, who is in Baptist East, uh, be in prayer for her that uh, God will bless her help uh, to go strong. Uh, be in prayer for several of our Boulevard families uh, uh, who have the uh, Omicron uh, virus of COVID. <clears throat> but all are doing okay, uh, our last check. Uh, so be in prayer for several of our families uh, and their families. COVID, uh, the McKinney family, uh, the Turner family, and Sister Savannah Martin uh, and her family. So let's be in prayer for all these families uh, who are dealing with COVID and, and uh, all those here across the nation and, and around the world. Uh, this, this thing is still running rapid, but God is still late. So we continue to <clears throat> trust in Him as we go through this. Sister Cecilia back is requesting prayer for health issues, so let's uh, be in prayer for Sister Backus, uh, whatever her health concerns might be. And then for all of our Boulevard family. 
family, all those who are dealing with health issues, uh, all those who are dealing with challenges of life, uh, particularly our senior saints, uh, and uh, our Boulevard family as a whole. We all need prayer. Uh, so let's be in prayer one for the other. Lord, this is just now. Eternal God, our Father, we're so uh, thankful for this blessed privilege that we have to stand before you on the blessed throne. We thank you, Father, for being God and for being good and gracious. And we thank you, Father, for being our God. We thank you, Father, for being able and available. And Father, more than that, we thank you for this day, this first day of the week. But even Further than that, Father, we thank you for a new year, for another year that we've not seen before, uh, filled with possibilities and opportunities. And Father, we thank you for loving us enough, uh, and keeping us, and bringing us through the previous year and allowing us to uh, step on the soil of 2022. Father, we come this morning on behalf of those who have made their requests known. Uh, Father, we ask that you be with those who stand in need of these blessings and uh, Father, we continue to lift up these petitions before your majestic throne. Father, we uh, ask your continued blessing uh, on behalf of Sister Gia Gentry and us in removing the distractions that might hinder us 
therefore creating and be the house of Jesus. Thus says the Lord God, I do not speak for your sake, O house of Jesus, but for my name, but, but for my holy name's sake, which ye shall have proclaimed among the heathen, where you went. Where I will sacrifice my, where I will sacrifice my great name, which was proclaimed among the heathen, which ye have proclaimed in the midst of men, and the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God. When I shall be sacrificed in you before your fair eyes. 24. For I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. Then I will sprinkle clean water upon you and ye shall be clean. For all your filthy from all your filthiness and from all your adultery will I clean you. My new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put into you, and I will take away the stone heart out of your flesh, and will give you a heart of flesh. When I will put my spirit within you, and cause you to walk You are God, and you are God all by yourself. You are the great I am. You are the creator of heaven and earth. Father, you are the giver of all that is good. Because of your mercy and your grace, you have given us the privilege and blessed us to see another day without birth on the day. We recognize and we realize you didn't have to do it. And Father, we sure are thankful that you did. Thank you, Father, for this another day that you have given us the privilege and the opportunity to get it right before you and to experience the power of love and peace. Because you are who you are, Father. Continue to shower your blessing down upon us. Even when we don't deserve it, Father, you are still a good and gracious God. And we come giving you thanks and praise because you are worthy. You are more than worthy to be praised. And we thank you for this privilege of this time that we have to come and worship as brothers and sisters in Christ to Lift up your holy name to magnify your Son, in whom you gave because you loved us so much that you gave the very best that you had. Thank you for Jesus, our Savior, our Redeemer. Thank you so much for salvation in Christ Jesus, and thank you for the New Testament church for be perfect with his precious blood and allowed us to be members thereof. So we come, Father, and praise you and we give you thanks because you give us everything that we need to sustain in life day in and day out. Thank you for all the physical blessings that we enjoy in this life. You provide us, Father, with all of our needs. And then you said, even when we are burdened with all of our trials and tribulations, that we can come to you and we can come before your throne of majesty and grace and power 
and cast all of our cares upon you because you love us and you care for us. Thank you for this privilege. Amen. And before we ask you anything, Father, we give you praise for all that you do. Because we recognize and realize you didn't have to do. And we thank you so much. And we come now, Father, thanking you for this privilege to call on your name and to petition on behalf of those things that we so desperately need. And we're praying, Father, first of all, for the saints in this place. We lift them up in your care and in your hands because we know in your hands it is the best place to be, Father. Because in your hands we know that healing grace will take place. We know that in your hands, Father, power and peace can penetrate our hearts and our souls where we are weak and weary because in your hands we'll be all right. And so we ask, Father, that you please bless according to your loving kindness, your tender mercy, for all of these on our sick and shut in list. We have many, Father, who have been battling illness for a long time, but you've been right there. You've been right there with them, Father. And so we ask that you continue to bless especially this is Gentry, Father, as we continue to bring her up. We know, Father, in your hands she'll be all right, and so we ask that you just continue to bless her. Strengthen her not only physically, but spiritually, Father, to keep our hands in your hands, knowing that in your hands, Father, you will take her and you will sustain her and continue to bless her. And so we just ask that you please bless. We're praying for Sister Baptist and her health issues, Father, that you know the concern and you know the need. And so we ask that you please bless. We're praying for Sister Burchett, Father, and her recovery, and ask that you just continue to be with her. That she will be strengthened physically, Father, that she'll be able to be able to come out and to be and to continue to strengthen physically, Father, that you will bless her health and strength, Father, that she will be able to uh, receive the care that she needs, Father, to continue to heal her to not only heal, but heal properly. And we thank you, Father, for answer prayers on behalf of all of us, whom we've gone in prayer and lifted up prayers on behalf, and you brought them back from their beds of affliction. We know that you're able, Father, and so we ask that you just please continue to bless according to your love and kindness and your tender mercy. And Father, we ask that you continue to be with our young people, our children, as they face so many challenges today. This society, Father, has put so many ideas and man-made things in their heads and have put before them, Father, where the decisions that they have to make are often overwhelming to them sometimes. And so we ask that you bless them. Strengthen them with the ideas and the things that have been instilled in them through their parents and grandparents and even through the church here, especially the church, Father. That they will fall back on the teaching and the doctrine of the gospel of truth. That they will be able to stand in this world, Father, against the wiles of the devil. Strengthen them, Lord. When they're away from home and the schools and the colleges and in their schools around them, Father, please give them the courage. That they will have the courage to stand up and to do those things that are right and pleasing in your sight. So we pray for them, Father, that you would just continue to watch over them especially those of the household of faith and those who have obeyed the gospel according to truth. Strengthen them, Father. And we ask that you would just continue to be with us, your people in this place. We continue to come together in love and peace and unity. Help us, Father, to always invite us together in love and peace and unity that we will always build one another up, never tear one another down. We continue to strive to do the work that you have put to our hands to do in this place. Thank you for the leadership that you have put place in. Thank you for our elders who shepherd the flock. Give them strength and wisdom and understanding of your word, your will, and your way. As they guide your people and direct the people in this place. Help them, Father, to always stay behind the cross. Be with our deacons, Father, as they continue to have an attitude of servitude to serve and to serve your people in this place. We ask that you just continue to strengthen them, Father. Thank you for the strong leadership over the years that you have put in place because there is so much going on in the brotherhood around this country and everywhere. 
concerning the church. And so we need strong leaders. And we need those leaders who will stand in the gap, Father. So thank you for blessing us with mighty men of valor in this place. Thank you for our minister, Brother Michael Jackson. As you continue to bless him and crown his head with wisdom and knowledge. Bless his ministry, Father, as he continues to direct and guide and lead the people in this place. Bless his family, Father. Thank you for the help meet that you have put beside him. And bless him, Father, so when he goes home, that he has a safe place, a safe haven, someone who understands and knows the things that he's going through. Thank you so much for Sister G. And bless her, Father, as she labors with him. And as they labor here in this place, and as we labor together, Father, Continue to direct and guide us in the way that you would have us to go. Father, we come now on behalf of those who are bereaved, whether recently or not so recently, Father. We know that we have gone through these holiday seasons, and it is a reminder of us, Father, that those loved ones whom we have lost, we thank you for filling this empty void in our hearts with memories of love and peace and comfort. Thank you, Father, for the happy memories that we have of our loved ones and that you continue to sustain us in our times of grief and bereavement. We know, Father, oftentimes we get weary sometimes, but when we look around and we see that the power of your glory and your grace continue to sustain us through all of our trials and tribulations, even through our grief, we thank you for, for being such a loving and caring God. God of comfort, God of all peace, that surpasses all of our understanding. Thank you so much. And Father, we come now thanking you for this worship moment. Thank you for this blessed old word and this blessed old book of Bible. Bless your servant now as he comes before us to break open to us the bread of life. As he go into this book of Ezekiel, chapter 36, and beginning at the verses in Fox, Father, that you will bless him with the things that he has prepared on his heart, that he will be able to present them in such a way that all who are here can understand. And most of all, those who do not share in our religious conviction, Father, they will hear a word from the Lord that will prick their hearts and they will prompt and ask the question, what must I do in order to be saved? Bless him now, Father. Please, Father, forgive us of our sins as we feel the same. It is in the mighty name of Jesus that we ask and give thanks for it all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Holy Spirit, where is me?
morning in this new year 2022, we're not here because I give and a new 
spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stone cards out of your flesh. And I will give you. But uh, 
but the prophet uh, attempts to console them even in the midst of captivity. The Bible says uh, in verses 1 through 3 uh, of the chapter, he says, Also, thou son of man, prophesy unto the mountains of Israel and say, Ye mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord. Thus said the Lord God, because the enemy had said against you, Aha, even the ancient uh, high places are ours in possession. Therefore prophesy and say, Thus said the Lord God, because they have made you desolate and swallowed you up on every side, that ye might be a possession unto the residue of the heathen, and ye are taken up in the depths of Tophel, and are an infamy of the people. But what Ezekiel says to Israel is that because the enemy has devoured you as a hungry beast, right now, you the talk of the town. You are the subject of every conversation. They got kicked out of their own land. The, the, the woman who sits on high, we now have his possession. But even when God's hope messes up, God still loves us to the degree that he will not allow the enemy to be victorious. Amen, somebody. By the time we get to verse 12, the Bible says, Yea, I will cause men to walk upon you. Jehovah, God through Ezekiel, says to the enemy, Even my people is, and they shall possess thee, and thou shalt be their inheritance, and thou shalt no more henceforth bereave them of me. God speaks to the mountain or the enemies of Israel to let them know that the time is coming when my people will come out of bondage and they're going to walk on you and you will be their inheritance and you will no longer cause them to grieve as bad as it might look right now. God's people will be victorious. Oh, then. But then, by the time we get to verse 16 following our text under consideration today, he begins to talk about what, what caused the captivity and the dispersion in the first place. As, as we look at God's concern over the corruption, the Bible says, verse 16, Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, or preacher, when the house of Israel dwells in their own land, they defile it by their own way and by their doing. Their way was before me as the uncleanness of a removed woman. Let me put a put a, put an underline on that verse. We're gonna come back to that in a minute. Wherefore I poured out my fury upon them for the blood they had shed upon the man and for that idol wherewith they had polluted it. And I scattered them among the heathen. They were dispersed through the country according to their way and according to their doing. I judge them. God had two major indictments against Israel. The first of which was the fact that they had defiled and polluted their own land that they dwelt in because of what they did. Because of sin. The cause of ungodliness. It's one thing to not take care of something that somebody gives you. You know, sometimes as parents, when our kids 
kids to come up, we give them stuff, and they just dog it out. You know, we get upset, and you know, we sometimes make You ain't taking care of nothing. It, it's one thing uh, to not take care of something that somebody gives you. But that's something altogether different. When you completely defile and destroy. Jeremiah chapter 2, uh, the verses of 5 through 8. Thus said the Lord, that they are gone far from, from me and have walked after vanity and are become vain. Neither said they, where is the Lord? Out of the land of Egypt that led us through the wilderness, through a land of deserts and a pit, through a land of drought and of the shadow of death, through a land that no man passed through uh, and where no man dwelt. And I brought you into a plentiful country to eat the fruit thereof and the goodness thereof. But when you entered, when you got there, you defied my land and made my heritage an abomination. The priest said not, where is the Lord? And they that handled the law knew me not. The pastors also transgressed against me, and the prophets prophesied by Baal, and walked after things that do not profit. It's one thing when somebody gives you something and you don't take care of it. But when God gives you the very best, and you turn around and defile and destroy, God will be upset. And that's exactly where I believe that we are now as a nation. And in the world, God has given us the best of everything in the world that He uh, that He He created. And yet we have the power of with drugs and debauchery, uh, guns and gangs, hatred and hostility. People are, who are supposed to be preparing us for survival are putting their own personal profit as a priority. And God has got time. And might be that the reason why we are experiencing pestilence and problems, all kinds of pandemics, all kinds of uh, unnatural weather patterns. Is that God is that because the very thing that He created, that He has given to man, we are destroying. Well, God is trying to show us. He has a concern over the corruption. And there's a need for us to be new in a new year. And, and here's, here's what, uh, when, 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 when God talked to Israel too, through Ezekiel, the, the fact that they had to look, here's what he says that looks like to God as he described it in part B uh, of verse 17. He says, their way. <clears throat> was before me as the unclean after the body of a removed woman. He makes reference to Leviticus chapter 15 and verse 19 as, as he talks about the fact that if a woman has an issue of blood, uh, she wants to be separated from the congregation for a period of, of seven days uh, until uh, her uncleanness was back. No one was to touch her. Okay, let, let, me, let me explain what, what I'm trying to say here. And sisters, uh, I, I want to be sensitive. Uh, and and I, I pray that I don't offend you, but uh, I don't want to be too graphic in explaining it, but, but I need to help you understand what he's saying in his text. When he talks about a 
woman had an issue of living. He talks about the menstrual cycle of a woman. Y'all with me so far? What is in your seat is that Israel's divine and pollution of the land that God gave as their own possession. They have messed up and devoured it so bad that to God is just like God have mercy. That's how bad they have destroyed and messed up. And God said, okay, if you don't act like that, I'm going to scatter you. I'm going to run you out of the land that I gave you. Because y'all don't appreciate nothing. I need everything to put you. I got you out of Egypt. I gave you a land that flowed with milk and honey, and now this is how you treat it. It might be. And so what he says, uh, essentially, in verse 19, is that because of how, how you act, I will scatter you in captivity because of the destruction that you brought on the land. It, it, it might be in 2022 that God has decided that the world needs to be in a spiritual battle because uh, the world that he created has lost his mind and destroy everything that I feel. We out there and we don't take it. The world has gone mad. And what God is trying to show us is that He has a concern for the corruption and there's a need for us to be new in a new year. Then in verse 20. That God had against Israel was that they proclaimed his name among the heathen. This is the Bible. And when they entered unto the heathen, whither they went, they proclaimed, they prostituted, they stained. They brought sorrow to me. He says, my holy name. When they said, listen to the Bible, he said, when they, Israel, said to them, to the heathen, these are the people of the Lord and are gone forth out of his land. It wasn't the heathen who was doing the talking. It was God for them. Who put God back to the heathen, to the folk in the world? Yeah, you know, uh, we were in the land that flowed with milk and honey, and God kicked us out. Yeah, you should have kicked out. And God had a big problem with that. You my folk, but now you can claim it, my name. The idea is that instead of Israel having a positive uh, effect on the heathen nations as the people of God, even though they were in exile, they were slaves to their appetite, they were dishonest and false in their word, corrupt in their morals, they should have been making a difference, and yet they were causing more chaos and confusion. Because of their honey. And what God said, Y'all 
God would not have anyone to die. But church, you know what we're That even when we mess up, we still serve a loving God to the degree that even in God will still have pity and mercy. He said in verse 21, but I had pity of Israel had profaned among the heathen. Who did they with? He said, therefore, the house of Israel, thus saith the Lord God, I do not this for your sake, O house of Israel, but for mine holy name's sake. But ye have the pain among the heathen for the win. The heathen is going to know, even though God's great. Even though you profane it and put down my name, even though you are my people, and I have saved you, I'm still going to let the heathen know who I am. And I was sanctified, verse 23. My great name, which was profaned among the heathen, which ye have profaned in the midst of them. And the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God, when I shall uh, uh, be sanctified in you before their eyes. For I will take you from among the people and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own. God scattered, scattered his among the heathen nations. But to prove to the heathen nations who he was, he goes back and says to Israel, I'm going to bring, even though you messed up, I'm going to bring you back to your own land. That's the kind of God we say. That's the kind of God who, who, who loves us in spite of ourselves. Even though we get out there, he loves us enough to bring us back into a goodly land, a goodly place. God has a concern over the corruption in our society because the world has become polluted and defiled. And it, and it might be that the issue that he has uh, with his people is that we are blending in instead of standing out. Y'all ain't hear me. And what he is trying to get us to see is that there is a need for us to be new in the new year. It's becoming more and more difficult to tell the difference between church folk and folk in the world. We ought to be making a difference, and sometimes we don't want to cause the most problems. God, God says to Israel, and perhaps He's saying to us this morning on the book, You have profaned my name. You put my name on the line by how you conduct yourself. Among folk in the world. You ought to be having an effect, a positive effect, on folk who you come in contact with, but rather you put down the church, you put down your church leader, you put down uh, the Lord. You might not be saying it uh, verbally, but by the way you act, you put down the Lord's name. God has a concern. What he said to us this morning. Well, let me let me hasten. After he shows us God's concern over the corruption, God will only allow stuff to go on for so long before he'll step in and fix it. So he shows us secondly uh, God's compassion in the correction. Even when God has to correct it, he does it with compassion. Seeking the best for our good. And so he said at the end of verse 29, 
then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean from all of your filthiness, from all of your idols. Will I cleanse you? He makes reference to the purification and restoration process under the old law of cleansing with water when, when one was defiled uh, or unclean. But he also looks prophetically to the coming of Christ who purifies the heart. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 10, the verse 20, uh, 22, let us draw near with the true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. He said in verse 26, a new heart also will I give you a change of mind and a change of will is the idea. And a new spirit, a change in our motives and principle of actions guided by the spirit. He said, will I put within you and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and I will give you Part of flesh, and I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and ye shall keep my judgments and do them, and ye shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers, and ye shall be my people, and I will be your God. When true repentance is followed by works meet for repentance, we can be assured of the fulfillment of God's promises, ye shall, not might, ye shall be my people, and I will be your God. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, the verses of 16 through 18 and 23, hath the temple of God of life, for ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. If we are to make a difference in this mixed up, messed up world that needs to be needed, as Christians, we have to be needed. And so, what I came to encourage you with on this first Sunday of 2022, that we are going to be needed. We need to work and not plan. We need to heal and not hurt. We need to clean and not corrupt. We need to assure and not accuse. We need to love and not know. We need to construct and not destroy. Because God has promised that no matter uh, what battle we have to fight, no matter what temptation we may, we may have to resist, no matter what habit we may have to break, no matter what trial we may have to endure, no matter what battle we may have to cross, God has given us the assurance of his grace because he is concerned over the corruption uh, that lingers in our society and his desire is to engage in compassionate correction. And that's why he wants us to see the need to be new in a new way. We can't keep going down the same road. We can't keep going down the same path and expect something different. Somebody said, uh, that's the definition of insanity. Doing the same thing and looking for different results. There is a need for the nation to be new. There's a need for the world to be new in this new year. But church, more than that, there's a need for the people of God to be new in this new year. Why? Because God has given us the charge, the challenge, the commitment. We are ambassadors for God. We speak on behalf of God. We live 
fervor and his fact to us. God has given us a job to make a difference in the lives of me. So that we can help turn this thing on. But it ain't going to happen. It's not going to happen. If we keep uh, dealing with the same, uh, same thought process, same ideology, having the same mindset, same mentality, I'm going to keep on doing what I did last year. God bless me to be here one more year, and so I don't see no need to do nothing different. Lord, have mercy. Every day that we live, we ought to strive to be better than God. And if you look hard enough, there's some stuff in you that needs to be changed. Look, I'm all in my own stuff. I have a need to be new in this year 2022. Y'all deserve a better preacher. But your preacher deserves better folk preach you. We are Christians under discussion. Building a better people for a better church. There's a need for us to be new. So, so I'm telling you, so I'm in church. I'm pleading with you. You'll see the need in your life to be you. God been mighty good to you. God been mighty good to you. Through many days of thorns and snares, we've already been. Here we are, this first Sunday of the new year. There ought to be a desire to make a commitment, not no New Year's resolution. No, I'm talking about making a real commitment, a sincere commitment to God to be a new person in this year. Everybody on the Last Sunday, we ended the year talking about God and me. God was good to me. So we ended our service on last week giving God thanks. We prayed for everything that he had done for us in 2021. We didn't deserve none of it. But he blessed us. Today, We ought to come asking God for forgiveness. We ought to come asking God to make us over. Make us for Create in me, O oh God, a new heart. As it was the request of David. Make me over. Make me brand new. I need to be new in this new year. Because I want to live better. I want to serve better. I want to do that. I want to be better. You ought to come this morning. Asking God to, asking God for his forgiveness, repenting if you need to. I've already been talking about it. I've already asked him to help me be a better person. Help me to be a better son. Help me to be a better leader. Help me to be a better teacher. A better husband, a better father, a better Christian. Because I see my need to be new in this new year. I trust that you'll see the need in your own life. The world at its work needs the church to be at its work. Let's start here. 
need to his friend and say, Jesus, you need to get somebody. You need him. You need prayer to the right. Get him. It's dark as we are. Being me. Being there. Come on. That's what it is. That's what prayer is. God has given us another opportunity. We didn't have to be here this morning. We didn't have to see a new year yesterday. But we did. You have to come up and ask God to get you to your day. You're here this morning, you're not saved yet. You're not obeying the glorious gospel. Good deeds, I do die for my sins, yours. How he was buried in a power of sin. And how early Sunday morning he got up out of that grave with all power in his Pleading for you and for me to be out of here, to make a difference in society. But you have to, the first thing that you have to do is have to say yes to Jesus. You have to put him on in baptism. You have to identify your sin as the people of God, in the house of God. God wants you to be saved. You do that today by using it. Believe in that same word. Turn your way to God. Confess in Christ to be the Son of God. Be buried in the water of grave of baptism for the remission of your sins. Get up a grave, creep your grave, and create to be faithful unto death, and God will be your promise. So you say this. You start this new year off with a brand new encounter. You start off. See the need to be here in this new year. God will bless you if you will do it. Talk to somebody today who needs to be saved. You ought to say yes right now as we sing this song.